Hello and welcome to another lesson in the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, or as we have been saying throughout this entire series, the Acts of the Holy Spirit through the Apostles, especially through the Apostle Paul now at this point in, this, in the game. And we're in Acts chapter 17, verses 16 through 21. It's the introduction to the Areopagus Address or the Mars Hill Sermon. And let's look at that right after we pray. So, Father God, once again, give us ears to hear. Give us minds that are able to understand and give us hearts that are willing, submissive, and obedient to you. Teach us what you would have us to know. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's just get into this text. It's Acts 17, 16 through 21. Now, while Paul was waiting for them... That would be for his uh, companions, Silas and Timothy and Luke, to join him at Athens. His spirit was provoked within him as he saw that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons and in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers also conversed with them, and some said, what does this babbler wish to say? Others said, he seems to be a preacher of foreign divinities, because he was preaching Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him to the Areopagus, saying, may we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting, for you bring some strange things to our ears. We wish to know, therefore, what these things mean. Now all the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there would spend their time in nothing except telling or hearing something new. Oh, that sounds a lot like the United States of America, where new is in and old is out. Anything new is acceptable and anything old is not. Um, they loved new tidbits. They loved new ideas. And so Paul takes advantage of that opportunity, and he is able to speak to them there in Athens. And so as he's in Athens, his spirit is provoked within him. Um, I wonder how often our spirits are provoked when we see the idolatry, when we see the things that are displeasing to God, when we see a lot of people who are misled, who are following after fads or circumstances, and who are not following the truths of God, how often are our spirits provoked within us? And what do we do about it when they are? Well, for Paul, he was provoked, so he reasoned. He, he talked to people in the synagogue. That was his starting point, the place where the Jews would meet. He would talk to them in the synagogue, and he spoke with devout persons. And he, he also, in the marketplace, as a tent maker, he would be there making the tent, and he'd speak with the people who came by, and he would try to tell them about Jesus Christ, crucified, risen, coming. He would try to lead them away from the false idols and the false gods into the truth, the way, the truth, the life that is found in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. And then some of the Epicureans and Stoic philosophers, the, the primary uh, philosophical systems of his day, the, the Stoics who denied passion and says, all that happens is good, the Epicureans who said, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. So on the one side, you have the conservatives and the, the staid um, rationalist and non-emotional. And on the other side, you have the emotional and the, the you know, party hardy while you live, because it's, it's almost over, the Epicureans. And Paul was speaking to both of them and trying to convince them that there is a God who loves them and who sent his son to demonstrate that love to them. Well, they were interested enough to invite him to the Areopagus because they were curious about what is new. They called him a babbler. They called him a foreigner. They called him a lot of things. But Paul took advantage of the opportunity, and he went and he spoke in the Areopagus. We'll hear that section in our next session, but 
What I want to ask us today as we think about this text is, is our spirit provoked within us when we see false gods, false idols, false ways of living, false ways of doing things? Are we willing to engage with those who are living, pursuing the lies of this world and the deceptions of this world? Are we willing to speak up for Jesus, speak up for Jesus, you know, in places where Jesus may not be accepted in the synagogue? He should have been accepted there. He was the Messiah. He was the Jews' king, long awaited, but many of them didn't want to hear it. In the marketplace, you know that many of them didn't want to hear what Paul had to say, but he spoke to them and he tried to tell them the good news of Jesus Christ. The thing that I would like us to take away from this little section, these verses 16 to 21, is that we too should be like Paul. We too should, should pray for a spirit of boldness, for wisdom and the ability to speak with clarity. We shouldn't be intentionally um, disruptive. We shouldn't be intentionally obnoxious. But we should confront the lies of our world. And we should stand up for the truth of Jesus Christ. And we should do that wherever we are and wherever people will listen. In this particular instance, Paul did it in a synagogue, he did it in the marketplace, and now he's going to the Areopagus, the, the place where the elite meet. He wasn't ashamed of the gospel. How about us? Something to think about. So Father God, help us not to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For as Jesus said, if we are ashamed of him, he will be ashamed of us. Help us to stand boldly like Paul did, not obnoxiously, but boldly, and help us to speak with clarity and truth against the lies of this world, and help us to do it in a way that will enable those who are around us to hear, enable us to speak in a manner that will open the ears of those who hear, and soften the hearts so that they can receive your word, because nothing short of eternal life is in the balance. Help us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. May you have boldness today to spread the good news of Jesus Christ everywhere you go.